Hello, this is Sophie. And I'm Cassie. And this is Soak. Stain. Art information you can actually retain. So what are we talking about today, Sophie? Well, today we are going to talk about Francisco Goya. And I don't know very much about him, but I have seen his, I believe they're called the Black Paintings. Is that what you were, you've were you been researching? I've, I've seen those in Spain. Yes. They're very striking, but I don't know a lot about them. Okay, so the interesting thing about Francisco Goya was uh, he was actually a painter for the royals or upper class. And he did oil paints and etchings. I didn't know he did etchings. When exactly did Francisco Goya um, start producing artwork? Um, I believe it was around the year 1766. Mm. He was born in 1746 uh, and he died in 1828. Um, and he is considered the most important Spanish artist of the late 18th and early 19th centuries. That's just off the top of my head. What did you learn about him? So at the age of 14, he studied under a man by the name of Jose Luzon E. Martinez. He then moved to Madrid and then studied with another dude by the name of Anton Rafael Mengs. So after he was done studying with those guys, he was like, hey, I want to do my own thing. So then he started painting people and some political stuff. And then King Charles VI noticed this guy and was like, hey, you paint really cool stuff. Um, come work for me and paint my family. So everything seemed great until he ended up um, getting a mysterious illness that made him permanently deaf. And then Napoleon invaded and he had to say goodbye to his little friend Charles who would put him in the court painter position. And um, actually he got to stay in that position because Napoleon liked what he made too. So then, after he had drawn for Napoleon a bit, and he also pledged his allegiance to France, um, Spain took back their country, and the new king was Ferdinand VII. And this guy was kind of cool with Goya because he also liked what he did, paint-wise. And he ended up allowing him to stay as the court painter. However, uh, Goya soon realized that Ferdinand was not cool and he was actually a tyrant. So he started drawing some very political pictures of Ferdinand and Ferdinand found out and then he was like, you're gone and he got exiled. So pretty much after that, um, Goya stayed in Spain for a little longer and then he was like, you know what? I'm kind of done with Spain. I'm going to go to France. So then he went to France and he lived out the rest of his life in a cute little house where the black paintings were born. And um, after that, he soon died of lead poisoning. And that is what I learned about Francisco Goya. So Sophie, why do you think Goya drew such disturbing artwork on his walls? Was it perhaps because of his deafness or was it because of Napoleon or was it because of the tyrant tell me well I think that uh, for the first time in years he was allowed to choose what he would depict in his art without having to think about what other people wanted him to do that is really true um personally i could see a lot of sadness and anger in his work um like uh saturn eating his son and the dog that just was a really sad painting what was it about the dog that uh made you think that it's a very isolating piece you just see this single silhouette of this dog looking up almost as if it's hoping for somebody to come and rescue it. Yeah. But it's almost like the dog deep down knows nobody's coming. Yeah. 
it's a really unusual composition for that time period, I think, or any time period. Yeah, um, like that one really sticks with me. Yeah, you see, is it about, uh, it's about isolation? Yes, 100% isolation with a touch of hopelessness. So, yeah. Which of the paintings really spoke to you, Sophie? There was uh, this one painting that's been attributed to Goya, but um, they're not sure if it was his. Um, it, it's like a, a giant, um, but it's not like, it, it doesn't really have the same vibe as some of the other Goyas that are so uh, dark. I think there was another one that was like a, a witch of some sort. I'm, I haven't really, I haven't looked at all of them. There is one that's like it 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 looks like a witch but it's uh it's actually an old man um and he has what appears to be a dying man next to him oh yeah i remember them being um a very death centric yeah yeah he i think he had a lot of regret yeah um there's also like, seems like the devil's sort of present in these. Yeah, actually, there is one that has the depiction of a goat. Oh. It looks like it's actually like a goat head and a person wearing a cloak. This might be the one you're talking about because it's called the Witch's Sabbath. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's uh, a. A group of people like what they're witches it's almost it, it's giving me the vibe of like um calling someone who isn't a witch a witch what's interesting about this painting is like it's so loose when you zoom into it parts of it uh almost look like abstract expressionism or something he's not using a lot of uh detail to uh render these faces but they, they have a lot of character and they're they look kind of ugly <laughs> they kind of look like potatoes they do what's interesting as well is like the further back you go it almost looks like they're turning into skulls it almost makes me wonder if he was like if you look at the clothing that these people that are all huddled together what they're wearing is like very um lower class um they're all barefoot it appears and um unkempt yeah whereas this woman who's wearing black is very is given a chair and um she's warm and i would assume she's wearing shoes because you can't see her feet um and she looks very young and beautiful from her profile. So maybe that's like the true witch was the aristocrats. Oh, do you think that's what he was saying? Is that how he felt? That's just my opinion. I, I can't give you like an exact mm. idea of how he felt because from what I've read and I didn't read a lot, mind you. <laughs> But from what I read, it seems that a lot of people don't know what he was thinking when he drew these. There was no exact uh, correlation to what he was going through, except the fact that, yes, he was around famine. Yes, he was around uh, suffering. Yes, he saw a lot of people killed. Um, and that's the only kind of... I guess clue we have as to where he got his inspiration from and he was around aristocrats and he was an aristocrat i believe i could be wrong about that but if he was painting for the royals i would assume he was living okay it makes me question even more if he has some sort of grudge against the upper class maybe this is signifying like all the people who were of lower class were accused and murdered 
whereas the upper class was treated like royalty and um, never was accused of anything. Oh my gosh! What? <laughs> I accidentally turned on. Uh, I accidentally played a video. I was I was trying to look at a picture. <laughs> I'm I'm looking at these um these Goya pictures. Um and I'm I'm getting scared because it's getting dark. <laughs> and I will <laughs> <laughs> Well, um Should we should we take that part out? <laughs> I mean it's Halloween, so <laughs> Yeah. Well, on that note, we're gonna end it here for today. Hope you learned something, and in the spirit of Halloween, hope this was a spooky episode for you as well. If you enjoyed our content, come back next week, where we will continue our spooky artist-themed content with the artist, H.R. Geiger. See you there.